I want to take you on a journey of what we call a request sent from a front end to a back end server. And there are so many steps that this logical object that we describe that is called request goes through before we land in a process or a thread that actually quote unquote handle the request, whatever that means. I want to go through these steps with you today. Let's jump into it. So this is an article I wrote on Medium. It's called The Journey of a Request, the backend. I'm not going to read it, but I like to use it as a reference. I'm going to have it in the uh, description below. I want to use it as a reference, especially for the graphic that I developed here. Right? But essentially, the if we understand what happens to the request from the moment it is incepted, pretty sure that's not a word, in created on the front, uh, front end until it is arriving in the back end. There is these steps that it goes through. And appreciating these steps makes you... Uh, you know, better aware of the performance implications of what you're doing. And uh, it goes back to what we, this word that I used, handle, you know. Uh, a common question that we get on the back end is like, how many requests can you handle per second? You know, that's a very difficult and frankly, very overloaded question to answer. Because what do you mean by handle? You know? Once I go through these steps, you will understand. It's like, wait a minute, yeah, what does what does handle really mean? Because it can mean all of these steps, can mean part of it. We often use, we mean the actual processing of the request when we say that. But even then, we really don't know how much that factor in. Let's jump into it. So here I go through the intro of these steps. Essentially, the sixth step that I, I believe we got, I, I just, I abstracted this myself. And you can actually break any of these steps into sub-steps, if you will. You can merge them together. Right? But there's the first step, which is the acceptance, not really of a request, but of the vehicle of the request, which is the connection. The connection of the request. You see, you cannot send really a request willy nilly to the back end. Well, you can you can argue that you can send it through a UDP, you know, pipe. But still, you need a, a pipe to send it through, and this pipe is called the connection. And and vehicle is what we call the transport protocol, you know, and this is usually referred to in. in uh, the OSI model is a layer four. So we have, so that we need a, a connection to send the request on. You know, we need a transport protocol. Even take this word need as a, you know, with a grain of salt. Yeah, take, take, take uh, the word uh, need with a grain of salt because you really didn't, don't need anything. You can build everything with directly to the middle for all, for all what's worth, you know. But that's what we have today, and we're building that in this sense. So in order to create a connection, your connection must be accepted. And boy, that is not a trivial task to do, you know? Uh, a lot of proxies and web servers, you know, their bread and butter is the connection acceptance. How can I accept you? Right? We'll talk more in detail about that. We need to accept the connection and you can have one process accepting or a 10,000 process accepting. I'm a little exaggerating, but you get my point. Read. Now that I have a connection that has a bunch of raw bytes coming at me, raw bytes, because yeah, connections, you know, in networking, we only send bytes. There is no HTTP in networking. Like at low level, you look at this pipe coming the data coming from the neck there is no really HTTP all this your JWTs they, they don't exist they are just a bunch of bytes so you really need to read you know and reading we're not really reading requests per se 
we're just reading data here. We have absolutely no idea what a request here. Right? So now I'm reading as a backend, I'm reading the data. Then we need to most probably decrypt this data because it is most probably encrypted because right? you probably use TLS because if you're using HTTPS, you have to use TLS and everything is encrypted. So now you read something, you decrypted it. So that's another cost. So cost number two, cost number one, cost number two, cost number three. you're decrypting. And then only then you can actually start forming coherent representation of what you call you know the request or the back end and and the front end agree to be what a request really is you know and a step four is must probably the most come uh, uh, uh expensive in my opinion uh, let's use another word Ex hidden expense it's a it's an abstracted away you don't really need know about it and that's the sad part. That is the scary part that we don't know about the most of the stuff that is going on here. And then after we parse, that is now I'm, I, I have a plain text bytes that says, oh, there is a git and then a slash about and then space. And then there is the protocol and then get and then oh okay okay there's a, i start understanding you read 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 and you start parsing and if it's http1 versus http2 versus i don't know ssh parsing must be happening you read you read and start understanding this protocol until you get a unit of what you call a logical request this is the start of the http request start reading Again, you decrypted it, right? Now you can form coherent, you know, a representation of this thing. And then, then, then this is a request. Oh, you got a request. Now up to your language library uh, presentation where you're, all right, okay, we have a request. Let's create a request object. That's a node, for example, or, uh, or, or, or in C++ or C sharp. You're going to create a dot a request object stored in the heap and uh, store the address family and the information and the client and the IP address. You just create all this stuff. There's always a cost to all this stuff. And, and the sad thing, again, it's all hidden. Uh, when I say hidden, it's, it's really uh, tucked away, you know, and we don't appreciate it anymore. To, to me, my job, if I ever have a job, is, is to kind of point at you is like hey guys look at this we're actually doing all this colossal explosions behind the scenes and i'm just my my job is just to point at it it's just like hey we're doing that we're doing that it's not free nothing is free nothing is free okay so we parse now we understand what the request is and this gets more complicated with http2 and http3 because there are the protocol itself unlike http11 which is a text only this is a binary stuff there's a stream so there's a little, there's so much stuff there at the protocol level. So we're parsing the request and we're parsing the protocol. Then we have the step five to actually decode this thing. Now that you received a request, the request might have headers, might have, uh, well, that's not really always the case, but it can have a body if it's a post request, right? And this body might be, I don't know, like a JSON, but the request object will not do adjacent parsing at this step. I mean, you can argue that it can, but often not. And the reason, that's why we need a decoding step where, okay, let me actually understand what this thing is, you know, and let me build a nice object for the user to consume. Because at this stage, we have a JSON object, but it's like, ah. Uh, Un, un, uh, unintelligible that's why you install the node.js you install the, the body parser or the in express you do express that does json you execute a function to actually execute that because there is converting the bytes that is the body that is json to actual json object is not cheap well it might be a little bit cheaper in javascript but other languages oh boy 
they suffer. You know, I've seen some libraries, some C++ library really suffer with JSON. You know, serialization and deserialization. That's what it is. Serialization and deserialization. Let me make sure, actually, I got my ducks in a row. Yep, that's it. That's uh, Oh, another thing. Yeah, this is also UTF-8, right? Uh, remember, even if you're sending in text, even if you're sending text, I don't. I need to know if this text is ASCII or UTF-8 because the, the byte representation really changes. That's part of the parsing. I mean, a lot of people might just say, oh, okay, Hussein, these two are really the same. I just, you know, I like to be different. You know, I like to spit things, you know, like show your sure you show yourself you know so yeah i think uh, i'd like to do the request parsing about itself and the decoding as well and the final step is actually to process this thing actually now that i have a request now it's mostly user code they say all right let's go ahead and take this sucker oh you want to i don't know get the list of user by id okay i know what to do let's uh, establish a connection to the back into the database to the postgres database send a sql asynchronously wait and then me while i'm waiting while i'm a waiting right i can do another of these cycles i can again accept i can read i can decrypt i can parse that's why the back end even with a single thread if it's doing mostly asynchronous work Oh boy, it can do so much, so much, so much work, right? But yeah, so uh, process here is like you can go so deep into this, right? Do you, uh, if it's a CPU heavy, do you split this into its own thread or its own process to execute that while your main thread becomes, you know, uh, alleviated to do other stuff so i'm going to stop here making this video a little bit short and maybe in the future videos i'll go deep into each one of them i think because uh you need to we need to pay respect to each of these steps you know each of these steps really deserve really more details and uh boy i can go into a lot of details sometimes and you guys actually let me know about this all right uh, see you in the next one goodbye